did sound like it was a... Oh, this is our time of Bible. When we talk about the Bible, our faith, uh, why we don't go to church, and it's not because it's full of hypocrites, even though that's true. The reason why we don't go to church is because the pastor is Lord. There's no room for the body that is members of Christ, you, me, and my wife or whoever, to become part of the assembly. To be assembled together is to be connected together. Not a stage with one person or a worship team up on a stage and then everybody sitting bound and gagged in their seats. So, art thou bound to a church? Better seek to be loosed. When you read the book of Acts, it said they met in their houses. They went from house to house. And they sold what they had and put it in a common place for those who had need could have use of it. Those who lacked were not lacking anymore because the church provided for those who needed substance and food and clothing and so forth. They even had a team that went out and cared for the widows. Stephen was one of them. Stephen was appointed to oversee that. And it says he was full of, full of the Holy Spirit and the power of God. And his, his task as a minister was to uh, make sure that the widows were taken care of, that they, things were dispersed to them evenly and fairly. But he also disputed with uh, those that would take, those who had crucified Christ. Um, he disputed with them, and they were the, of Israel, and his sermon, you might call it a sermon, it was a most loaded exhortation, one of the most loaded exhortations in the Bible, chapter 7 of Acts, where he goes from the prophets Abraham and into Moses and ends up uh, making them want to kill him, and they did. They stoned him. He told them they were stiff-necked, hard-hearted, uncircumcised in the heart. Oh, man, that cut. And it said they gnashed on him with their teeth. And they stoned him, and when he was being hit, pummeled by rocks, he looked up into heaven and saw Jesus standing on the right hand of God. What a glorious experience. I mean, can't imagine you're being stoned and killed on earth and yet you, you lift up your eyes and you see Jesus telling you to come up. And one of the witnesses of that event was Saul who later was known as Paul, the Apostle. And he was one of the ones that raged against the Christians, the early Christians. Caused havoc. Committed some to prison. What a glorious conversion he had when he met the Master of the Universe, Jesus Christ. He told him, it is hard for you to kick against the pricks and the pricks being the conviction of the Holy Spirit. 
It's not easy to do. So many have been converted by a total opposite position. The conversion process is a miraculous event. Jesus told Peter, when you are converted, this is when he was his disciple, when you are converted, you will strengthen your brethren. This was a preempt when Jesus went went to the uh, was crucified in his journey there. Uh, he told Peter that he would deny him three times before the cock crowed three times. Not so, Lord. I would never do that. But he did. The word of God. <laughs> You can't counter it. God says something's going to happen. It's happened. It'll happen. And after that, he whipped, Peter wept bitterly. We can only imagine how he was very reluctant to feed my sheep, Jesus said. After that event, when Jesus was risen from the dead, he said, feed my sheep. But Lord, you know I love you. Lovest thou me? Feed my sheep. Hmm. There's a connection there. If we love Christ, we will feed his sheep. All of us. All of us who know the Lord. We have been called to feed his sheep. He is the good shepherd. He's given his life for us. Not as the hireling pastors who, when the enemy comes in, they flee and the flock is destroyed. I hope you're having a good day and that your sleep will be in peace and you will meditate in the word as it blesses your soul. God bless you.